Hey guys, it's Jeff from Home Renovision here today. Um, listen, I'm going to here to talk about roofing today. It's one of the most difficult questions for homeowners, especially if you've owned your home for a little while, is what kind of roof should I be putting on my house? And part of the reason for the dilemma is that we went through a change in the industry where we went from just a traditional asphalt shingle and they went to organics and it failed miserably. We had all kinds of problems with those products and now we've come full circle and made room for the whole metal roofing industry. It's gone crazy. They got lots of designs and structure and capacity, 50 year lifetime roofing. And so then the whole, the whole traditional shingle has had to kind of uh, re-emerge and reinvent itself and so now we have this thing called architectural shingles and these new shingles are about a 25 year product and when I was looking at doing my old farmhouse I have lousy airflow I was concerned about heat buildup and, and early decay and I wasn't sure which direction to go and when I started investigating and talking to the pros I was surprised by the answers I got so I invited the owner of the local roofing company out here who did our roof and we we're gonna have a huge chat and bring all that information to you. This is kind of a video for those who are researching and you just want to know the truth and you don't know who to trust. Well, you can trust me because I got nothing to gain from giving you this information except helping you out, which is our goal on this channel. I'm just going to jump into the conversation I have with the owner of the company and we're going to go through all that information and I'll see you on the other side. So I'm over here with Arzan today. Now he's one of the owners over at Roofmaster and we're going to have a quick chat about roofing where it went and where it came to yeah because I'll be honest with you when I went to go and price out my roof I was a little shocked yeah it's been a while since I bought a roof prices have gone up they have yeah. but it's not about price per square foot it's about price per square foot by how long it's gonna last yeah exactly right yeah. so this is what I'm learning and it made me feel better so yeah I am I remember the days being on a job site there'd be a roofer next door and they would knock on the door and say hey we're here it's a simple two sides you know 412 yeah. We can knock it off in an afternoon, 2,000 cash. Yeah. Those days are gone. Those days are long gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So talk to me because when I was looking at my pitch, I got a 12-12, mm -hmm. right? I was looking at the idea of maybe going with metal. Yeah. I got the quotes for that. I started getting quotes for uh, the architectural shingle that's being installed now. That's right. And it came down to basic math for me. It was almost the same price per square foot per year. Yeah. Right? Essentially, yeah, that's what it comes down to. Is that fair to. to say that? Yeah, and I mean, for most, like, most people may not understand what a 12-12 is, and that's basically a steep roof, something that's not walkable. Uh, it has a really good pitch to it, so you're not gonna have the issues you'd have with lower pitch roofs, like, well, I, like I in the winter time, and, yeah. You know, those winter-related issues. Sure, sure. Um, you know, but it has its own challenges, right? Because a steep roof is a lot more uh, labor intensive to, <laughs> yeah, to remove tell. and reinstall. Right. Our shingles, you know, of the past would last, they, they were rated for 25 years and um, they would last anywhere from, you know, 10 to 15 years on so, average. So let's talk about that. Yeah. Right? It's like, um, uh, wow, that is probably one of the only industries where people have a product mm -hmm. that you buy with a, a year attached to it, your life expectancy, yeah. where you'll never meet it. Never. Because yeah. life expectancy in a roof shingle is dependent on so much other technology in the home yeah. and where you live, what kind of weather That's conditions right. you're getting. Yeah. And it's one shingle being sold on all of North America yeah. with the same expectation. Exactly. So what you do is you take that, that base of, we'll call it a 25 year, and then we apply it to where you live and then you can have a realistic expectation. Yeah. Right? Like climate, climate's a big factor and then also yep. the way that the, the, the building construction, right? So right. if you have a conventional attic with soffits and good exhaust vents, you have a lot better airflow in there and your shingles will last a little bit longer. With old houses like this, we just, we just don't see that conventional construction. Everything's closed off, like you said here. You don't yeah. have any functional soffits. Right, right. Uh, you know, so the roof's gonna get very hot. It's gonna deteriorate a lot faster than if it was conventional construction. Okay, so let's yeah. talk about that because uh, when I was making my choice, I was looking at a, a metal roof and they call it a 50 year roof. Yeah. Your shingle, a certain teat is a 25 year roof? Yeah, this is a BP shingle. Right. And it's a, uh, but, but they're all very similar. So like most of the manufacturers have what they call a lifetime shingle. Okay. That's a 50 year, uh, roughly a, like a 50 year, you know, and the warranties vary slightly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and the way they prorate. So, so all of those shingle products are prorated. That's something that's important to understand because it's not like a 50 year, uh, so, some steel roofing products have a 50 year non-prorated warranty. Okay. Um, 
And if there's any issues with that product, the manufacturer will get, you know, cover the full cost of replacing the product. Okay. If it's prorated, you know, if it's a 50 year, uh, let's say a 50 year warranty and it's prorated, well, after 25 years, they're only going to give you half the half original the value, half the original value. Right. Right. So after 25 years, you can imagine. Yes. You know, no, the, the cost of the product went up and so, so you're getting a few bucks. Today I buy a roof metal. It's 20 yeah. to 25,000 for this house. Yeah. Let's say 25 years from now, there's an issue. I yeah. still own the same house. Yeah. That's the other key. That's the key. You have to own you the house. You have to own the house still. Yeah. In most cases. Yeah, some of them are transferable, but. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if you have an issue at 25 years, they're going to give you half of the 20 to 25 that you spent. But yeah. now the same roof is going to cost you 50. Yeah, the same product has gone up, say right? maybe maybe twice as much for the product. So you're well, really only going to get a fraction. Okay. Right? And that's fine. That's yeah. better than nothing. Yeah. But so then when I was making my decision, I was like, okay, what do I really need out here? I going to have either I'm all in on a metal roof and I'm selling the house anyway. Mm -hmm. Cuz I'm going to buy another one and do a bunch of videos there. And so what I'm looking at then is I want to be able to sell this house and give a product to the next homeowner that if they were to buy this house, that roof is going to last them the life of their mortgage. Yeah, exactly. And that, I think, is a very responsible way to do business. Yeah. And that's how a lot of people see it, right? They, right. No one really wants to spend money on a roof. If you had 15 grand to spend, you'd rather spend it doing your kitchen or, or remodeling, right. you know, bathrooms, whatever. Uh, so roofing is one of those things that we, we have to get done. Yep. And uh, you know, you want to just, you spend the money and then not have to think about it. When we were researching return on investment, outside projects get you the best return on investment. Roof doesn't do that great. Yeah. But at the same time, if you don't have a great roof, you'll never sell your house. Yeah, that's right. It's kind of a weird oxy paradox, weird yeah. thing going on there. No one wants to buy a house and have to do the roof. No, right? because they, they don't want to have to finance that operation after the fact. Yeah, exactly. Right? So here we go. So you need to have a good roof. Yeah. We used to buy a three tab shingle. Yeah. We used to get five or seven years on it. That's what we're ripping off now. Yeah. It's a seven year old roof. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. That roof is seven years old. Yeah. Um, so let's quick talk about the product. Show me what you're putting on our house for the people at home. Okay. Because so our, our, we, we're, they're seeing the system, right? They yeah. know there's layers. Of course. There's a lot more water diversion system going on in the entire house now. Yeah. So it's more umbrella based and not just diversion. Yeah. So it's it's basically um, you have you have two separate systems here. So we rip off the old shingles, of course. Uh, we we never want to go on top of an old shingle roof. That just multiplies reasons. the heat factor, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, and also the um, you you have no chance to inspect the deck underneath. That's true. So you could be installing over rotten wood or yeah, you know potentially something that was an issue. Yeah. You might have had a valley or a wall that was leaking. Yeah. And you really have no way to inspect that. You have yeah, no yeah. way to know where it was leaking before, what the condition of the, uh, the substrate is, yeah. you know, if it's planks with large gaps or, you know, if it's nice plywood like you have here on this house. It's an interesting point because now that we're using pneumatic nailers for everything, yeah, the guy that's installing, you can't tell, you can't tell the difference between no. good wood and bad wood. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot, you can, but Maybe, it's, it's but much more difficult yeah, to yeah, tell, yeah. right? And so it's, it's a, it's imperative to strip off the old roof, inspect the deck, right. make any repairs that are necessary at sure. that point then you install your new roof and it, yeah. it's basically two parts right you have your your underlay which consists of the ice and water shield right yep. uh, now that can be three feet from the eave up or six feet it's in intervals of, of three feet uh, in your case we're doing three feet yep. a, uh, at the eaves and then three feet up the valleys and yep. the reason for the the valleys is because that's they're just very prone to ice back up yep. uh, especially with the ottawa climate yeah. and uh, <laughs> for the eaves it's it's also part of the building code to go with a heavier uh, a heavier uh, grade waterproof membrane. Yes. And so that's why we put three feet at the eaves. Now, if you have a, a lower pitch roof, uh, it's, it's not uncommon to see us put six or even nine feet of ice and water shield from the eave up. Okay. Um, and that's just to give us a little bit better protection against water backup, you know, during the winter. Right. So when you get a thaw thaws. free cycle, exactly. steep roof, water yeah. will still run off. Yeah, you got it. On a flat roof, it'll sit there. Yeah. So you're done. Yeah. Now you mentioned the building code. What is minimum code for a roof? So the minimum is, yes, you have to have a waterproof membrane. Okay. Like 36 inches up from your eave. So that could be, uh, it, it, yeah, it, I'm not sure on the technical specifications, but it, it just, you can't just have your, your, your base underlay 
okay. uh, from the Eve up. It's got to be something a little more substantial. Right. Um, and so for in the Ottawa area, we always go with three feet of ice and water shield. Yep. Um, you know, Toronto and other areas of the of the country have different climates, maybe less necessary. Sure. Uh, but for us, we have a lot of freeze thaw cycles. Are you familiar with anything in uh, going down in the states? How that how it changes? Or well, in the northern states, it's it's a lot like up here. Not like here. Um, you know, similar weather patterns and yep. stuff. I, I guess where you're closer to water, like larger bodies of water, there's more moderate temperatures. Sure. And so in those climates, um, I think you can get away with having less waterproofing right. underneath the shingles. Okay. Right. And so what, what you have to remember is the shingles themselves are not waterproof. Uh, you know, and, and even the underlays, not really waterproof. Everything's going to work, uh, you know, when water runs down the slope. Right, right? and we talk about that on this channel. It's a, it's a diversion system. That's right. If you install the roof upside down, it's gonna your house floods. Yeah, it's gonna leak. Right? It's not waterproof. Exactly. Unless you go with a flat roofing system that's that's actually torched and welded and sealed. It, it could actually hold water. Okay, so right. minimum code is ice and water shield, yeah. valleys, ridges, all those things where we're gonna get ice. Yeah. Do you have to have a synthetic underlay on a house? It doesn't have to be synthetic. Uh, you know, in the past we used like a tar paper, um, but the thing is with roofs lasting longer now, that tar paper disintegrates and it deteriorates over time, right? Makes sense, so match the technology with the technology. Exactly, so if we're going with a longer lasting shingle, yep. we want to have a longer lasting underlay. That's basically what this is. It's, it's, like, a, it's like a very high grade Tyvek, right? It's, so it's, it's uh, breathable one way, Right. Air can still, air and so, moisture can get out. Because we still have a lot of people confused about that. Yeah. Right? House wrap, the Tyvek. It's not a vapor proof system. Water vapor can still move. So relative humidity, right? This product here operates in the same technology. So your, your roof can still breathe, which is very important to help keep it dry. But this is cool. This has got like an anti-slip thing Yeah, on that's it. right. It's also specifically designed for us. For These crazy roofers, yeah. yeah. That, so that when it's installed, it's not very slippery. Nice. Right? Even if it got wet a little bit, it, it still has some grip to it. Yeah. And it's a lot more durable. You'll notice it's a lot thicker than a, a home wrap. Definitely. Because it's not just being installed on a vertical wall. We're actually walking on it. Um, there's going to be traffic. All right. And so let's talk about the shingle then real quick. Yeah. This is an architectural shingle. That's incredibly dense. Yeah, you can tell it's a laminate shingle. Laminate just means that there's multiple layers uh, basically glued or, or laminated to one another here. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what you're going to get is a little bit more rigidity against wind lift. Yes. Also, these shingles are butted tight with the, the ones beside them. So there's no gaps, right? Like you'd have in a three tab shingle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, those gaps allow wind and water and things to, to get in behind. Right. And help, you know, just, it just deteriorates. So in the, the, shingle in the driving rain. That's right. Right. Driving rain or wind, especially wind, right? Wind can get under the tab and lift it up. Uh, the other big factor here is we're going from an wow. organic shingle to yeah. a fiberglass base shingle. I was going to say, because the old so. shingles of the days, you could fold them over and then just yeah, tear them off. Yeah, they would just snap like a cookie. And these things are a lot more resilient uh, because the base layer in here is just, a, it's like a fiberglass mat. Right. It's like a woven fiberglass uh, base. That's and then awesome. you have your, your standard, you know, tar and asphalt and your... your, your um, <laughs> your granules. The other big difference is where the, uh, the um, they put the glue on these shingles. Two, two rows of glue here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The important thing is that the, the glue is now on the edge, on the underside of the edge of the shingle, rather than, uh, you notice the three tabs. The three tabs here, in the middle. Right? Yeah. So what happens is when you have a tar line on the shingle every, here. Every shingle would be able to lift up and Yes. Win. And it's also inconsistent because if you're if you're shingling slightly lower, you're you're you know you could be an inch away from your tar line. Nice. In um, so in this case, you, you're always in a consistent area. You're always gluing the shingle at that and ideal location. And this is basically location. heat activated, eh? Yeah. So once yeah. you stick it on, it exactly melts together. And it's always going to seal right in an ideal location. Brilliant. So now I'm going to have a 25 year roof. Well, this is a this is a 50 year product. I know. So my expectation you is you could easily expect 25, <laughs> 30 years out of it. I would think this is my thing because without the fresh air, I want to just manage my expectation. Yeah. And I don't exactly. want people watching the video going, oh, "I'm buying a 50 year roof." Yeah. Because you then have to say, "What's the condition of my house? What's the orientation? Do I have shade? Do I have winter? That's right. Am That's I right. is it, am I in an area where I get so much direct sunlight and heat yeah. that it's going to affect it? What's my ventilation? Yeah. All these different factors. Well, even a steel roof, uh, there's, you know, a common misperception is that a steel roof lasts forever. Yeah. And, you know, in many cases, the products themselves uh, may be 
may retain integrity as yeah. far as a waterproof system, it's but they're going to lose the they're finish. They're going to look ugly. Yeah, they'll look ugly, right? The paint. We have we have a climate yeah. where you have snow and ice sliding down that that yes. painted steel finish, right? So it's right. going to slowly deteriorate. It's going to dull first. That makes good sense. And then slowly, you're going to be left with a, a scratched up or a dulled roof, right? And so a lot so, of people will still change their lifetime steel roofs because they don't look good. I'm rethinking my decision now. It's even better than before. I thought it was just being cheap. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's a good decision. Uh, because now I've got on this a 50 year shingle, Yeah. put next to a 50 year yeah. metal roof, there's gonna be deterioration on both of those products. But you're paying more for the, the, the steel. Pretty much, Yeah. pretty much I'm getting, if this roof shingle only lasts me 25 years yeah. and I replace it again, it's the same dollar per square foot per year. But yeah, my exactly. initial investment is so much lower. Exactly. So shingle is the best bang for the buck. Hmm. Um, no kidding. You know, if, if you go with a uh, laminate shingle like this, lifetime warranty, manufacturers offer various upgraded warranties that right, you can right. buy uh, if you want to upgrade your warranty to have yeah. it like non-prorated. Okay. Uh, so a lot of the manufacturers are doing programs like that. Essentially, it really doesn't change. You'd have to meet change. conditions for that though, right? You'd I mean, have I to would meet never some match. conditions, yeah. Yeah, I would never match that with my low soffit air. But is it really going to do anything for you? Probably not. Are you going to be in the house 30 years? Yeah. Most people sell their house a lot sooner than that, right? So in our, in our, more, in our country, yeah. Yeah, to pay more for a warranty that you, you probably won't use, uh, you know, just doesn't make the most sense to me. Well, there you go. So but, if you're building a forever home, maybe, yeah. Yeah. right? If you're yeah. building any other house and you put on a new roof in years gone by, you could just put a three tap shingle over an existing roof and sell a house and Screw yeah. the next guy. That, yeah, a lot of, of course, that is going on. Course. And but don't now, forget the other downside with steel, a yeah. lot of people completely overlook this, is that if the house is not designed for it, you're gonna have a whole whole other issue, right? With ice and snow sliding off the roof. This is the thing. Compacting itself when it yeah. lands. Yeah. And you're gonna end up with like this this moat around your house or this this berm. Right. You know. Uh, and then water's gonna fill up, you know, behind it. You could have foundation issues, etc. Yep. So yep. You know, a steel roof isn't always the the best be all end all solution. Yes, that's good advice because right. when you're when you're dealing with your house, you can't just look at every every system of the home individually. No, exactly. You have to look at the overall picture. Yeah. Exactly. Like most people always forget the grading on their house. Yeah. That's the most common yeah. mistake. Yeah. And then they end up with a foundation problem, not a grading yeah. problem. Or you could have a driveway <laughs> right beside the the roof edge, and yes. uh, you, you know you put a steel roof on, you'd never be able to park your car in that area. Right. For fear that you'll have an avalanche, you know, come down and destroy your car. Well, this is awesome. So after 25 years, if the roof is still in good shape, it's just a free roof. <laughs> Essentially, <laughs> anything after that is a pro bono. Right? It's just money in the bank. Yeah. Awesome. Exactly. Well, thanks for taking time. Appreciate yeah. that, Arzu. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, there you go, guys. So, you know what? When it comes down to it, best bang for your buck. The world has changed, okay? Get yourself a good quality roof. Don't be afraid to go with a three-tab shingle. It's not a lesser roof. It's just a different option. So there's all the information to one of the most common questions about roofing. Now, listen, if you're a researcher and you've got a ton of questions, I've got a great playlist for you I want you to watch because we do a live show pretty much every Tuesday night in the wintertime, and we take questions and we answer them all and we've started making little miniature videos about the most commonly asked questions that people have about renovating and materials and the industry and we put them all in a playlist so that you can learn a bunch of stuff we're doing something new so you can check out this playlist it's going to have timestamps and information there if you don't like something just hit the button move to the next video they're just about four minutes each i think you're going to like it we'll see you there